Okay, so if you've watched the first video, which is basically just a super brief overview of my tabbing method, you probably get the basic idea of what I'm doing, but might be wondering exactly how I'm doing it. So, in these next videos, I'm going to try and slow down and actually answer all these questions for you. The first thing I do when I start a storyboard shot is I use my new storyboard template action. And I've got all kinds of these templates for all kinds of different projects and aspect ratios. And depending on the needs of the project I'm on, I'll set the relevant aspect ratio to my normal hotkey, which is F5. You can choose whatever hotkey you're comfortable with, but F5 works for me. All right, let me just draw my first panel. First, I'm going to draw my background grid. Okay, something like that. All right, now I'll do the character. Or maybe it'll be this weird long-legged circle thing, circle creature. Uh, and I guess I'll just make it walk across the screen. I'm going to save this panel as 0010. Why am I using this naming convention? Don't worry, I will get to that in a later video. All right, so I have my first panel. Now I need my second panel. I could just press my new template hotkey, which I've set as F5, and create a brand new template. But if I do that, I'd lose the background I've already drawn and the drawing of the creature I already did, and I want to use that as an onion skin. And if I want to keep those things with a new template, I'd have to go back and then copy and paste each individual layer to the new template, and that's just way too many steps. So instead, I'm going to use the duplicate image option in the image menu. And as you can see, I've also given the duplicate image item a hotkey assignment, which is F8. I'm going to plan ahead a little more with my panel naming and name this panel 0020. Doing all that made an exact clone of this panel. You can see I'm going back and forth between these two panels and they are the exact same. This way I can take the drawing of the creature that I've already done and turn it into an onion skin. To do that, I've made an action that turns the opacity of whatever layer I'm on down to 12%. I'd also recommend giving that onion skin action a hotkey just because you'll be using it all the time. I've set mine to F12. Now that I've got a new panel with an onion skin, I can just press Command Shift N to make a new layer, and I can draw the next pose of this weird creature over the onion skin. Once I'm satisfied with that second pose, I select the onion skin layer and delete it. And by the way, the hotkey to select the above layer is Alt right bracket, and the hotkey to select the below layer is Alt left bracket. So let me repeat this whole process one more time as I make a third panel. I press my duplicate image hotkey, which I've set at F8. I name my new panel 0030. I select my previous drawing layer, set the opacity to 12%, create a new layer over that. Now I draw my third pose. And finally, I select the previous onion skin layer and delete it. And there we have it, our first three panels. Just as a reminder of what we went over in the first video, here's how I'm flipping through the panels in Photoshop. Um, to flip forward to the open panels, I press Control tab To flip backwards to the open panels, I press Control shift tab uh, And you can do that on both Windows and Mac. If you're on a Mac, you can also press Command-Tilde to move forwards, or Command-Shift-Tilde to move backwards. And by the way, in case you don't know already, in order to get your files to open as tabs, you have to go to your Photoshop Preferences, Select the Workspace menu, and make sure Open Documents as Tabs is checked. Okay, there's one final little thing before I finish up with these basics. In Photoshop, if you make a new panel, or if you duplicate your current panel, you'll see that it doesn't open up in the same location or zoom size as the other panels. See, when I flip back and forth between the third and fourth panel, the new fourth panel doesn't match in the same location on the screen, and that just makes it really hard to see the continuity within the panels in your shot. So the way you fix that is by going up to the Window menu, then the Arrange menu, and then you press Match All. Match All will take the zoom, the location, and the rotation of whatever panel you're looking at, and it'll match all the other panels with that one. So assuming the other open files are the same size and resolution, they should all line up perfectly with each other. And I've even set a custom hotkey for Match All. I've chosen F2, and I would definitely recommend choosing one for yourself because you're going to be using it all the time if you use this method. Okay, that's about it for the basics of this tabbing method. In the next video, we'll go over exactly how you can create all these custom hotkeys that I've set for all these obscure Photoshop menu items. See you there.